you will be shown how the basic instruments operate and how to read them. You will also learn what errors in readings may occur. Aircraft instruments can be divided into three groups according to function. They are pitch instruments, bank instruments, and power instruments. The pitch instruments include the attitude indicator, the altimeter, airspeed indicator, and the vertical speed indicator. There are three bank instruments, the attitude indicator, the turn and bank indicator, and the heading indicator. The two power instruments are the tachometer and the airspeed indicator. Several of the instruments are connected to the pitot-static system. Others use a gyroscope. Instruments connected to the pitot-static system include the airspeed indicator, vertical airspeed indicator, and the altimeter. This system includes a pitot tube and a static pressure tube. The pitot tube is usually found on the underside of the wing. It is located in a spot where it is clear of slipstream and other air disturbances. The opening of the tube faces the line of flight. As you are flying, the atmospheric pressure in the tube increases due to the movement of the aircraft through the air. The only instrument directly connected to the pitot tube is the airspeed indicator. The airspeed indicator is also connected to the static pressure tube. Also connected to this line are the altimeter and vertical speed indicator. The static pressure tube allows atmospheric pressure to equalize during changes in altitude. There are usually two vents on opposite sides of the fuselage where they will not be affected by turbulence or ram air pressures. Having two vents also compensates for errors which might develop from a steep turn or erratic changes in altitude. Errors in the pitot static system can result if the pitot tube is blocked by dirt, water, or ice. As part of your pre-flight check, the pitot tube and static port opening should be inspected to make sure they are clear. Many planes have an electric heater to prevent ice buildup in the pitot tube, however this system can fail. During a climb, a partially clogged pitot system will give you a lower than actual airspeed. It also causes lower readings on the vertical airspeed indicator and altimeter. In descent, the readings are exaggerated. This problem can be spotted while in flight if you will notice the reading slowly catching up when you resume straight and level flight following a climb. If you ever suspect blockage of the static system while in flight, open the alternate static source found on most aircraft. If you notice a significant change in the position of the needles, there is static pressure blockage. Also, always make sure the pitot heat is on when icing is suspected. You can appreciate a blockage of this system would be dangerous if you were flying in low cloud or high moisture conditions such as snow or rain. Before you are shown how the three instruments connected to this system work, take time for this short review. Flight instruments can be grouped according to function. Which instruments indicate pitch? Flight instruments can be grouped according to function. Which instruments indicate pitch? The attitude indicator, altimeter, airspeed indicator, and vertical speed indicator are used to monitor the pitch of an aircraft. Which instruments indicate bank? Which instruments indicate bank? The attitude indicator, turn and bank indicator, and heading indicator. Why should an inspection of the pitot-static tube and port vents be part of the pre-flight check? Why should an inspection of the pitot-static tube and port vents be part of the pre-flight check? The pitot tube and port vents should be examined to make sure they are free of any dirt, ice, or water. Blockage of the pitot tube will cause low airspeed readings. A clogged static system will cause the altimeter, airspeed indicator, and vertical speed indicator to read too low in a climb, too high during descent. As mentioned earlier, the airspeed indicator is connected to both the pitot tube and the static pressure tube. This instrument measures the difference in air pressure between the two tubes. While on the ground, not moving, the pressure in the two lines would be the same and thus register zero on the airspeed gauge but while in motion, the pressure builds in the pitot tube. 
This pressure differential is read on the gauge as the indicated airspeed. This is the speed the aircraft is traveling through the air, not over the ground. Now, examine the face of the gauge and note that it is calibrated in both knots and miles per hour. The gauge also has color-coded markings. These markings tell you the safe operating ranges and limits. The red line is placed at the never exceed speed and tells you the maximum speed at which the aircraft can be operated without sustaining damage. The yellow arc indicates the caution speed range, the lower limit of which indicates the maximum structural cruising speed. The aircraft should only be flown in this range in smooth air. Because of the unpredictability of turbulence, you should never fly at speeds in the yellow zone. The green arc is the normal operating range. The lower limit is the power off stalling speed with the flaps and gear up. The upper limit of the green arc is the maximum cruising speed during normal operation. The fourth marking is white and indicates speeds in which fully extended flaps may be used. Errors in the airspeed readings may be caused by a variety of factors and will have to be corrected. As air density varies, so will the margin of error. The standard for calibrating this instrument is normal sea level pressure at 15 degrees Celsius. A good rule of thumb to remember is for every 1,000 feet of pressure altitude, add 2% to the indicated airspeed. For example, you are flying at 9,000 feet with an indicated airspeed of 120 knots. To correct the error, multiply 9,000 by 2% which equals 18 percent. Now take 18 percent of 120 knots which equals 21.6. Then add this value to the indicated airspeed of 120 knots to arrive at the true airspeed of 141.6 knots. More accurate corrections that take temperature into account can be made using a circular slide rule. Some aircraft have airspeed indicators with a computer built into them. You may also have an airspeed error due to the position of the static pressure vent and the pitot tube on the aircraft. This is corrected by using an airspeed correction table which is supplied by the aircraft manufacturer. Friction from the working parts of the instrument may also cause error, as will ice and water. The icing problem can be eliminated by using the pitot heater and avoid getting water into the system by keeping the pitot head covered when the aircraft is standing in the open. The vertical speed indicator shows the rate of climb or descent. It uses an aneroid capsule connected to the static pressure line to measure change in barometric pressure. As the airplane descends, the pressure in the static line increases. The opposite is true for gain in altitude. During level flight, the pointer remains at zero. The instrument is calibrated in feet per minute. Keep in mind, the vertical speed indicator measures the rate of climb or descent, not the altitude of the plane. An upcurrent of air may cause you to gain height while the aircraft is level. Also note, there is a lag time of six to nine seconds for this instrument to register changes. The lag time increases the more rapidly pitch changes are made. More sophisticated vertical speed indicators that register changes almost instantaneously are available. The final instrument connected to the pitot static system is the altimeter. It is an aneroid barometer that measures air pressure. Decreases in air pressure are shown as increases in height. Altimeters are calibrated to a tolerance of plus or minus 20 feet at sea level. If your altimeter setting compared to a known altimeter reading is out by more than plus or minus 50 feet, have it checked by maintenance. The face of the altimeter has three hands. The largest hand records altitude in hundreds of feet. The next largest hand shows altitude in thousands of feet. The smallest hand records units of 10,000 feet. The altimeter shown on the screen is reading 10,500 feet. The altimeter is subject to errors caused by pressure, temperature, and the effect of mountains. Pressure errors occur if the altimeter is not calibrated to current barometric readings. Remember, this instrument measures heights above sea level. On a long cross-country flight, barometric pressure can vary, 
The altimeter has a barometric scale calibrated in inches of mercury, which allows you to keep the altimeter setting current. Here's a rule of thumb for pressure error. For every point one inches of mercury added to the altimeter setting, the indicated altitude changes by about 100 feet. Follow this example. You are flying over a mountain range 4,800 feet high. You have selected an altitude of 5,800 feet to clear the mountains. The altimeter setting at the airport of departure is 29.85. The setting at the destination airport is 29.35, 0.5 of an inch less. If you did not reset the altimeter, you would clear the mountains by 500 feet, not the 1,000 feet you'd planned on. Remember, an altimeter that is set too high gives readings too high, and vice versa. Also keep in mind, when going from an area of high pressure to low pressure, unless the altimeter has been reset, it will read too high. The maxim from high to low, watch out below, should be committed to memory. Abnormally high pressure, above 31 inches of mercury, occurs in cold, dry air masses. Most altimeter scales do not go beyond 31 inches. In these cases, the indicated altitude is lower than the true altitude. Under these conditions, leave the instrument set at 31 inches. Air traffic control will issue the actual altimeter setting. Because the altimeter is calibrated to indicate true altitude in standard atmospheric conditions, temperature errors can occur. Extremely cold temperature errors can produce an altimeter error of as much as 20%. Use your flight computer to correct the temperature error. This correction will be based on pressure altitude, not the indicated altitude. To find the pressure altitude at any given time, simply set the barometric scale to 29.92. Mountains can affect the operation of the altimeter, resulting in readings that are as much as 3,000 feet too high. The mountain effect occurs when wind is deflected around large mountain peaks or through valleys. Remembering Bernoulli's principle, which states that an increase in airflow causes a decrease in pressure, you can well imagine the effect on the altimeter. The instrument, sensing the lower pressure, gives you a false reading, which is too high. Winds blowing over a mountain range can create a phenomenon known as mountain wave. This effect can extend as far as 100 miles downwind of the range and at altitudes above the actual elevation of the mountains. Generally, mountain waves cause turbulence, but sometimes they may be very smooth. As a result, you can find yourself in a downdraft with no warning. The altimeter will show no decrease in height until it reaches an altitude level equal to the level caused by the mountain wave. Before proceeding with the section on gyro instruments, take time for this short review. How does air density affect airspeed indicator readings? How does air density affect airspeed indicator readings? The airspeed indicator computes its reading by comparing air pressures in the pitot and static tubes. This instrument is calibrated at normal sea level pressure and a temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. An error of about 2% occurs for every 1,000 foot increase in pressure altitude. True or false? An aircraft can generally be operated safely in the yellow arc on the airspeed indicator. True or false? An aircraft can generally be operated safely in the yellow arc on the airspeed indicator. False. The yellow arc indicates the caution speed range, which means the aircraft may only be flown at this airspeed in smooth air. Since it is difficult to predict turbulence, the aircraft should never be flown intentionally in this range. What factors produce an error in altimeter readings? What factors produce errors in altimeter readings? Pressure, temperature, and the effect of mountains may cause the altimeter to give false readings. The barometric scale on the altimeter should be set for the current barometric pressure. The effect of temperature can be calculated using a flight computer. Wind blowing around mountain peaks and through valleys can localize low pressure areas, which would give an altitude reading that is too high. 
as well. Winds blowing over a mountain range may create a downdraft known as a mountain wave. True or false? Sudden changes in pitch are noted more quickly on the vertical speed indicator than pitch changes made more slowly. True or false? Sudden changes in pitch are noted more quickly on the vertical speed indicator than pitch changes made more slowly. False. There is a lag time of six to nine seconds between the change in attitude and when it is shown on the instrument. The quicker the change, the longer the response time. Now, a look at the gyro instruments. The three gyro instruments we will discuss are the heading indicator, the attitude indicator, and the turn and bank indicator. To understand how these instruments work, you must understand the gyroscope. A gyroscope is a spinning wheel which rotates at a very high speed. It is mounted in a gimbal to allow its axle to be pointed in any direction. The gyroscope has two characteristics that are employed in aircraft instruments. They are gyroscopic inertia and precession. Gyroscopic inertia means the rotor will remain fixed regardless of how the base of the gyroscope is moved. Precession occurs when a force is applied to a spinning object. Simply put, the spinning object will react as if the force had been applied at a point 90 degrees from where it was actually applied. Because the gyro is a precise instrument, it requires special care. Gyro-driven instruments should be caged before aerobatics to avoid damage to their bearings. Avoid abrupt braking, since this can also put unnecessary strain on the bearings. The air filters of air-driven units should be cleaned to avoid contamination by dust. If the instruments are Venturi-driven, make sure the Venturi system is free of ice. Ice blockage will cut off the air supply and disable the instruments. If the instruments are being removed for repair, they must be handled carefully. Shock damage will render the instruments useless. Now, let's look at the instruments individually. The heading indicator is sometimes referred to as the directional gyro. This instrument indicates the heading of the aircraft and assists the pilot in maintaining that heading with the least effort. The face of the instrument is a compass rose and the heading is read opposite the nose of the airplane pointer. Just like the compass, the figures are printed with the last zero left off. The three stands for 30, 12 for 120, and so on. The gyro is synchronized with a magnetic compass at the beginning of the flight. The heading indicator is subject to precession error because of the frictional forces in the system. The amount of error is about 3 degrees in 15 minutes. It is also subject to apparent precession caused by the Earth's rotation. This varies according to latitude, ranging from zero at the equator to 15 degrees per hour at the poles. Both types of precession error should be corrected regularly, about every 15 minutes. Now, if the gyro on your aircraft is vacuum driven, it should not be used for takeoff until it is run for five minutes to allow enough vacuum to build in the system. Also remember, if maneuvers exceed 85 degrees, the heading indicator will give incorrect readings and must be reset. The next instrument is the attitude indicator, also known as the artificial horizon. This instrument gives the pilot a horizon of reference when the natural horizon is not visible. It will show you the relationship of the nose and wings to the earth. The face of the instrument has a horizon bar and a split bar, or a miniature aircraft, to represent the attitude of the aircraft. The degree of bank is indicated by a scale at the top of the instrument. When a plane is in a nose-down attitude, the miniature plane drops below the horizon bar. In a nose-up attitude, the plane rises above the artificial horizon. In level flight, it is lined up with the horizon. As mentioned before, bank is indicated by the scale at the top of the instrument. When you bank the aircraft, the miniature plane on the instrument banks and the pointer indicates the degree of bank on the index scale.
The miniature airplane can be adjusted to match the horizon bar should it be necessary to fly slightly nose up or nose down because of altitude, power, or load. Again, if the attitude indicator on your aircraft is vacuum driven, make sure it is running for five minutes to build enough vacuum. The final gyro instrument you'll be shown is the turn and bank indicator, sometimes called the turn and slip indicator. This is really two instruments in one. The needle indicates the direction and rate of the turn. The ball shows you whether there is any skipping or skidding. When using the instrument, remember the turn indicator shows you the rate of turn, not the amount. The standard rate turn is three degrees per second. In straight and level flight, both the ball and needle are centered. If one wing drops, uncorrected with rudder, the ball will roll to the side of the low wing. The final instrument you'll be shown is neither a pitot-static nor gyro instrument. The tachometer shows the speed at which the engine crankshaft is turning in hundreds of revolutions per minute. This instrument usually includes a recording device, which also keeps track of the number of hours the engine has been operating. The RPM is directly proportional to the power output of the engine. On aircraft with a fixed pitch propeller, the TAC is the only instrument that displays information about engine power settings. The RPM on the gauge is controlled by the throttle. On aircraft with variable pitch propellers, the TAC and manifold pressure gauge display power information. In this case, the RPM on the TAC is controlled by the propeller control and the manifold pressure settings are controlled by the throttle. Now, take time for this brief review. Why is it necessary to adjust the heading indicator on a long cross-country flight? Why is it necessary to adjust the heading indicator on a long cross-country flight? The gyro in the heading indicator is subject to precession error from two sources. Friction in the instrument itself causes it to creep or drift about three degrees every 15 minutes. Apparent precession from the Earth's rotation also causes drift. This ranges from zero at the equator to as much as 15 degrees an hour at the poles. You are looking at the attitude indicator. And note the miniature airplane is below the horizon bar with the left wing higher than the right. The scale at the top shows about five degrees. What is the attitude of your aircraft? You're looking at the attitude indicator and note the miniature airplane is below the horizon bar with the left wing higher than the right. The scale at the top shows about five degrees. What is the attitude of your aircraft? Your aircraft would be in a nose down attitude and banks to the right about five degrees. True or false? The turn and bank indicator assists you in determining the amount of bank attitude in your turn. True or false? The turn and bank indicator assists you in determining the amount of bank attitude in your turn. False. This instrument only tells you the rate at which you are turning.